Well, the election landscape may be changing as we speak, and perhaps rapidly. We still have a tight race at the top of the polls between Liberals and Conservatives, but it's the resurgence of the Bloc Québécois that appears to be whittling away at any overall Liberal seat advantage that we'd seen till now in the polling. So what is happening? David Coletto, the CEO of Abacus Data, is with me now. David, good to see you again as always. What's going on with Yves-Francois Blanchet? Big target in the debate last night. Uh, he seems to be impressing, and he certainly you know, uh, boosting the, the party hopes yeah. and party polling results in the province of Quebec. How come? I mean, I think it's because he's appealed to people. He's uh, come off as uh, a or normal average guy with some personality, which typically is why people like people. I think he's, he's done a good job. I think there's other context around his own performance that helps explain, I think, what's going on. And we're seeing it in other parts of the country as well. And that is, you know, as this campaign has gone on, more and more Canadians, I think, have come to see it as a very close race in the first case. Two, that it's unlikely maybe that either of the two main parties would win a majority. And so the risk of if you vote, you know, Bloc, you get Stephen Harper, you get Andrew Scheer, or if you vote Bloc, you get Justin Trudeau, as a majority government, this is appears. And the risk of electing a caucus full of Bloc MPs off to Ottawa dissipates, right? That if your goal is defend my interests in Ottawa, and there's no one party that has, a, has control of the House of Commons, then that gives those individual MPs a lot of power. I think that's part of the context in it. Certainly a good performance in a debate, as he did in the TVI debate um, previously, I think helped put him on the platform. It allowed the media in Quebec, I think, to talk about something other than the fight between the Liberals and the Conservatives, and so that also probably helped in his, in his case. But there's no doubt across a number of polls that the bloc is up and they are threatening both the Liberals, yeah, let's, the NDP and the Conservatives. Let's talk about that because I mean, if you look at expectations, the Liberals were counting on Quebec, yeah. knowing they would take losses in other parts of the country. Uh, they were counting on Quebec uh, to build seats, to win the seats they might lose in other parts of the country in terms of, of offset numbers. Now they're talking about uh, defending seats. They're talking, the Liberals are looking at the possibility of yeah. losing seats because of this block resurgence. Same for the Conservatives. They weren't hoping to build as many, but the ones they were hoping to build, they may not build now. And of course, you talk about the threat to the block. So, uh, you know, you know what do you think the voters are considering there mm -hmm. in the province of Quebec when they're at this point, 10 days to go, they're going, you know what? Whatever. I'm going, you know, I like, I'm going, I like this guy and yeah, I'm going yeah. for him. I think, I think it's a part of all of that, right? So we, we've seen in Quebec, um, Mr. Shear's numbers go down. I think he had a bad performance. The, the polls after that debate, the first French language debate, showed he did not win that debate. He, he, he lost it pretty clearly. That then triggered a lot of voters then saying, okay, so who else am I open to? And Mr. Blanchet performed very well. And when we ask voters in the surveys that we're doing who are considering or are voting for the BQ, and we say, what's driving this? Is it the leader? Is it your dislike for another party? Is it an issue? Or is it defending Quebec's interests? Almost all of them say it's because I'm looking for somebody who's going to defend our interests in and Quebec. And that's the message he plays every every single time he talks at these debates. It's what he always says. He exactly. always says, look, you guys fight over all these things. I'm all about Quebec and only Quebec. If it's something good for the whole country and it benefits Quebec yeah. too, you can count on me to vote for it in the House of Commons. But at the end of the day, if it's not good for Quebec, you have an enemy in me. Right? And, and, even, and the threat of separation doesn't exist by voting BQ because... They can't call a referendum, right? So even though we know from research we've done and others that support for, for separating Quebec from Canada is as, probably as low as it's ever been, it's ironic that the separatist party could actually see a boost in the number of seats right. and a surge. And, and that's that interesting because the case Andrew Scheer made in, in the French debate last night was, right, was you had, you had this sort of two-tiered attack from the, the two main federal leaders, right. uh, Justin Trudeau saying if you vote for the bloc, you get... Harperism again. You get Harperites like Andrew Scheer, and if you vote for, and Scheer is saying if you vote for the Bloc Québécois, you get the whole referendum and sovereignty debate reignited because the day after the vote, yep. Yves Francois Blanchet is going to be back in the camp of the Parti Québécois pushing sovereignty, right? But uh, voters don't, they're I don't not think thinking they're that feeling way. that. And, and even if, I mean, you have to keep in mind, if the Bloc, let's say, I'm just hypothetically saying, they get to 30 to 35 percent of the vote. Now, they're out of it. A lot of them are. A lot of them voting for them are separatists. They have a core vote that are separatist, but the others that might come over, I don't think are feeling that this is them voting for separation or sovereignty. This is them voting for um, either their preferred candidate or leader, um, or 
again, defending the party that has the best chance of defending Quebec interest, particularly in a minority government situation. If this was a one-sided affair that the Liberals or the Conservatives were running away with this, I'm not sure the Bloc has this space uh, because you'd want to be part of that government. But the arguments that, that you know, Mr. Trudeau was making even was that you want MPs around the table who are on, around the cabinet table in a, in a majority government. The best way to do that is vote for us. That's looking yeah. less and less clear. And it's voters it. are aware of the, you know, the yeah, stakes. People know that the, the flip side of that argument is if we're going to have a minority government, you can have, you can have anybody you want around exactly. the table then. Because yeah. they can maybe they actually have more power right. to get what they want out of the government. So let's look a bit. You know, we, we had the last of the debates last night, the French language debate. Yeah. So we'll find out in the next uh, few days as survey results come out what kind of impact that had. But we can sort of let's go back to the English debate earlier yeah. so we can start tracking sort of what you found there in terms of where opinions are, what people are thinking and what might be shifting and then we'll we'll talk about what to watch for over the weekend sure. as well. But let, let's go back to the English debate and yeah. you asked people uh, did you watch? What, like, what do we know about who was watching? Well most Canadians have heard or watched at least part of the debate, right? That's what we know. Um, about 32% say they, they haven't heard much about it or, or not at all. Um, there was a large audience for this debate. Um, now, it's important that there's a difference between those who watched all of it or some of it and those that heard about it. And this is where that like halo effect of the media coverage of it, of the commentary that comes after these debates are so important. Why those clips that we see on social media over and over right. matter because that 25% um, are also considering sort of the fallout of these debates. What we know though when we ask people how did you react to it, right? If we put that board up that shows how, how do you feel about the leader's performance? Right, let's look at it. What's pretty clear uh, is that Jagmeet Singh performed very well uh, and he impressed a lot of voters. Over half of those that either watched or heard about the debate say they had a pe positive impression of Jagmeet Singh's performance. Only 11% said negative. Elizabeth May did also did quite well, right? Um, very few said they, they heard anything they didn't like. A lot saying, eh, it didn't really change my impression, but pretty good positive numbers. If you look at the bottom of it, we'll come to the middle in a minute. Max Bernier turned off more people likely than he, he attracted, uh, as did uh, Mr. Blanchett, which is expected given that, you know, most of the vote, most of those watching this debate don't live in Quebec or don't speak, uh, speak English, uh, speak French. And so his, his audience was very different. But the two in the middle, Mr. Scheer and Mr. Trudeau, what's interesting is about equal numbers liked what they heard versus disliked what they heard. And so in a way, although this, I think, debate had an impact on this election so far, it didn't hurt Mr. Scheer or Mr. Trudeau in significant ways in terms of what they said on the debate stage. But because one of their competitors did so much better, mm -hmm. as we'll see in a minute, um, from, from the public's minds, that it might be affecting how people are going to considering voting. So at let's this look stage. at the next two boards here. Who did the most to, in the English deb debate to earn your vote? Who did the most to lose it? So what do you see on when it comes to earning votes? So earning votes, Mr. Scheer, uh, sorry, look, I'm making the same mistake that the moderator is making. Mr. <laughs> Singh uh, came out uh, ahead of both Mr. Trudeau and Mr. Scheer, 29% to 23% for, for the two um, other party leaders. Ms. May well back at 7%. So, so Mr. Singh, you know, you could say won this debate. People thought he did the best. And given that, that more voters are considering voting liberal or conservative, I think it is noteworthy that, that Singh went well ahead even of what people say they'd vote. When we ask who did the most to lose your vote, um, a clear picture in the sense that, you know, Andrew Scheer got 35, um, Trudeau not far behind at 30, and then everybody else kind of tails off. So again, that polarization between Mr. Trudeau and Mr. Scheer on this question shows us the opportunity that Mr. Singh has in, in being the one that more people said, I like what I heard. I think what's really interesting, let's move ahead to today. So we had the French language debate last night, and where's the first place? You know, uh, given Battleground Quebec, you'd think one of the first places you'd want to go is let's go back to Quebec and see what we can do there, and maybe that's coming. But both Justin Trudeau and Andrew Scheer head straight out to British Columbia. Right. That tells me a couple of things. Uh, they need to, you know, shore up support there or compete in seats out there, and it means... I don't know if it's too early to say it means they know what's going on in Quebec and they can't rescue that. So now they're out to British Columbia to try and defend that. And they're, up, they're defending it probably against a rising NDP where there's a more natural constituency, uh, a lot more seats in play that the NDP has a role. So if the NDP is gaining, they're unlikely to gain in Quebec. Um, not just because, you know, uh, I think the NDP's gonna have, still have a hard time in Quebec. Right. But if they are moving, as we've seen in the polls this week, Mr. Singh's personal numbers up substantially. Um, the NDP vote numbers a little lagging behind, but they're starting to move forward. And so when you look at the regions of the country where the NDP is likely to benefit from this boost, 
BC is in the is is certainly in that that group. And there's a lot of ridings on Vancouver Island in the Lower Mainland that might we thought were no longer going to be three-way races that increasingly become three, maybe four-way races now because the NDP has a little bit of momentum that they didn't have any really up yeah. until. Uh, Monday, we weren't seeing much. So Thanksgiving weekend and this, I don't know if it's the real thing or it's a myth, families get together and it's supposed to, you know, election time and turkey and election talk. Yeah. Uh, probably some football sprinkled yeah. in there too. But in any case, uh, what do you watch for now? What do, you, do we see if, I mean, if we come through Thanksgiving weekend and you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, it still looks the same. Is that likely what we're stuck with then? Likely. Um, if we don't see one of these parties' momentum continue, I think what we learned from 2015 was that the liberal liberals coming out of Vancouver, out of Vancouver, out of Thanksgiving weekend, had some momentum, and then in the final days of the campaign, it kind of spiked up as, right. as collectively people said, "Okay, I think this will be our choice." For change. I'm watching to see whether that happens again. And it's not necessarily, I think, going to happen with either the Liberals or the Conservatives. I think a lot of voters know those, know those, what those two choices mean. Right. What I'm not still clear of is whether this goodwill that's now being bestowed upon Mr. Singh, um, I think the bloc is likely going to hold on to the momentum they've gained. So, all, so the real big question is what does, happens to the NDP? Does this become viral? Do, in particular, young voters say, Jugmeet Singh's what I've been waiting for, and now I see it. And that would mean a sinking in, in some ways, of this narrative that the bloc's leading, right? You know, yep. like it's going to be a minority parliament. Make the choice you want in Quebec. Which is, Maybe this, this is the narrative Jugmeet Singh. Which is, is why he laid out his, you know, six conditions. Right. Not because he's ready to negotiate, but because he's signaling to voters this election will end in a, you know, some kind of stalemate. No one's going to get all the keys to the House. If you want, Here's NDP, what we'll if you want me around that table putting pressure, uh, you got to vote NDP. All right, David Coletto, thanks. Thanks, Peter.